Hey everybody, how you doing? Bruce here, Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my channel. Uh, appreciate you being here. We love covering the cruise ship news and developments of what's going on out there. And uh, today we're going to talk about Royal Caribbean. I'm going to tell you where every single ship is for Royal Caribbean Christmas 2020. Where are they now? You can see by this world map, they're clustered in the Caribbean uh, in uh, Northern Europe a few in Asia. Let's zoom in here. Um, Europe, uh, UK, and Germany. There's one ship right here in Germany. It's in Poppenburg. This is the shipyard where uh, new ships get built out for a bunch of different lines, including Royal Caribbean. The Odyssey of the Seas has just been brought out from the indoor assembly uh, building at Poppenburg. Uh, this is the, sh the scene the other day, about a week or so ago, a week and a half ago. Seven hours it took to pull this ship out, a thousand feet long, um, I don't know, 18 decks, massive. One billion dollars. The ship, the Odyssey of the Seas, is headed to Southampton April the 12th, Barcelona April 30, and Rome October 19 to begin her sailing sailings and the sailing season uh here just or near southampton we have two ships we have the jewel of the seas uh that ship is supposed to be in galveston march 22nd and then to be uh, brought over to barcelona april the 7th and copenhagen on may the 4th very popular ship um the question of course is will sailings actually begin in march the Royal Caribbean and other cruise lines are hoping that this is the case, but uh, if the vaccine rollout is going to take till the summer and the fall, which is what I think is going on, we may not see sailings for any ships that I'm listing here until the fall, which of course brings in the question, where will they hang out between now and say the summertime? Uh, because right now these ships are in the, uh, in the UK. Now the Anthem of the Seas has also been in the UK and she is hanging out in Southampton. Um, she's supposed to go to New York March the 7th and then come back to Southampton May the 7th. And so this is a question, it's a quantum series ship. The question will be, will it even, will it even go to New York City if the, if the sailings aren't going to begin until the fall if everything gets delayed you know and the, the cruise lines as you know are doing the 30 day at a time delay game if this is going to go on through the summertime this ship may not even leave the united kingdom it might just hang out here and wait out the entire uh, spring and summer and then decide you know then they'll decide what the fall schedule will be for the ship and all the ships but the anthem of the seas very popular cruise ship wonderful amenities a quantum class ship similar to the odyssey and uh, it's almost always completely sold out. Uh, of course, going forward, we don't know what the occupancy levels will be, but, you know, time time will tell. Um, beautiful shots of the Anthem of the Seas, a gorgeous, gorgeous vessel. Now, just off the coast of Africa, we have a ship heading across the Atlantic. Here it is right here. This ship is headed for Florida. This is the Allure of the Seas. It's one of the Oasis-class ships, one of the biggest in the world. That Royal Caribbean operates. It's heading for Miami. She's going to be there March the 7th, apparently, uh, for, again, sailing. And uh, Port Canaveral in May. So the Allure of the Seas is headed now for the U.S. And she will be working off the coast of Florida. My guess is if the Allure of the Seas does not take paying passengers, um, you know, until the fall, she'll just hang out in the Bahamas and uh, wait out the uh, you know the downturn the shutdown until she's allowed to sail again uh if you're ever on this ship you'll feel right at home if you're north america a uh, north american uh you've got your starbucks and all the other brands here you also have these wonderful uh, solarium uh, pool areas uh just fantastic uh great activities for the kids wonderful activities for the adults as uh, active or non-active as you want to be absolutely wonderful i'm going to go back to europe now uh this is a shot here of italy and greece all the cruise lines that are there there are a couple of gray uh there's one little gray dot and a little ship logo these are former royal caribbean ships we're talking about the empress of the seas it was just sold about two weeks ago the story is that the ship is going to be um, 
has been sold to some kind of an Asian cruise line. We don't know who it is. We don't know what's going on. Uh, but the Empress of the Seas and the Majesty of the Seas both were unloaded by Royal Caribbean. It's a sad sight to to say goodbye to the Empress of the Seas because she was really one of the favorites of the of the passengers over decades. And the same with the Majesty of the Seas. But these two ships were the oldest two in the fleet. They have very few balconies. Uh, maybe 15% of all the cabins were balcony cabins and the rest were inside an ocean view. And that's just not going to fly with the new health protocols. And keeping ships like this afloat for between, say, one and a half to three million bucks a month just doesn't pay. And so they're out of the fleet. Now we're going to zoom in here to Asia. We're going to come in here to uh, Singapore uh, as we zoom in here. Um, there are uh, several ships in this region. Um, you can notice here uh, right in Singapore itself, we have a ship, and then we have a couple just off the coast there waiting for the startup. The Quantum of the Seas is in Singapore, and these ships here, the Radiance, and the Voyager, the Ovation, and the Spectrum of the Seas, they're all waiting offshore. The Quantum of the Seas has been running these sailings to nowhere out of Singapore, two, three, four-day long sailings. Um, these are about to end. Uh, they're finished um, April the 5th. They're supposed to be in Tokyo. May the 10th, they're supposed to be in Seattle for the Alaska cruise season. We'll see if that happens or not. But the Quantum of the Seas had a bit of a scare a couple of weeks ago. There was uh, an elderly gentleman that tested positive for the virus on board. Then it turned out that, no, no, that's not true. The virus is not uh, present here. But it took until the gentleman was brought back to shore before they figured that out. A real mess. But that's the story with the Quantum. Um, the Radiance of the Seas waiting offshore. May 2nd, supposed to be in Honolulu. May the 12th, Vancouver and uh, uh, Anchorage until September. So this ship is supposed to be uh, taking passengers to Alaska this summer and uh, spring, summer, and fall. I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, we, you know, hope springs eternal. We'll wait and see. Uh, the Voyager of the Seas right here, um, a 1999 built ship, by the way, uh, kind of the same age as the Majesty of the Seas with uh, 3,100 passengers, 1,100 crew, 618 inside rooms, 939 ocean view rooms, and 876 balconies. With a lack of balconies, this ship's future is in doubt. Um, it's supposed to be in China from April the 29th with five to seven day China cruises. So it's not coming back to North America. If the Chinese authorities allow it, the ship will sail Chinese waters um, all this year, uh, but it's not coming back. To North America. Um, I don't think the ship would be uh, profitable if they could only sell the balcony cabins, even maybe 85% of the balcony cabins. The ship would lose money for the cruise line. Ovation of the Seas is also off the coast of um, Singapore. April the 25th, uh, she's uh, uh, still in Singapore. 12 days to Seattle. Uh, she's going to go there from May the 21st to September the 17th, again for Alaska sailings. Uh, this is all in doubt. Um, if Alaska does not happen because ca Canada won't open its ports, then the Ovation of the Seas will be stranded wherever they keep her. And right now she's just off the coast of Singapore waiting out her, her shutdown. Spectrum of the Seas, uh, it will stay in Asia. Uh, here's a shot of her uh, in Asian waters. Um, she's right now Shanghai. Uh, supposed to be there 24th of February. That's where she's headed, actually. So she'll head for Shanghai, but she's she sailed Hong Kong and she sailed Taiwan. She sailed all over Asia, but she is China bound and uh, you know supposed to be staying there. But right now she has no paying passengers. We're waiting to see just what happens next. Now come on over to North America, and we'll start here. This is where most of the uh, Royal Caribbean ships are, and we start in Barbados. We have the uh, Serenade of the Seas. She's right now docked in uh, downtown Bridgetown. Uh, May 5th, she's supposed to be in Honolulu, and May the 16th in Vancouver. Again, this will depend on whether or not Canada opens up the... Uh, the uh, the uh, you know waters ports for Canadian ports will the Serenade of the Seas be able to sail Alaska this summer or not? It's been a very popular ship. It's got all the amenities, um, uh, but we'll wait and see if the uh, if the green you know the green light is given by Canada or not going forward. Uh, time 
uh, will tell. But, you know, you look at some of these photos here, you, you can't believe, uh, you know, even as a passenger, you're on board these things. You're in the beautiful pool here. You're relaxing, uh, just, you know, chilling out. You're in Alaska, folks. <laughs> That's an indoor pool. Quite amazing uh, to enjoy all these amenities. Freedom of the Seas, February the 7th. She's supposed to be in San Juan, Puerto Rico, going from Barbados to San Juan. May the 8th, uh, up to New York, uh, and then sail out of New York. We'll see if the Freedom of the Seas is going to be uh, doing that or not. Again, she is in uh, uh, Br- uh, Bridgetown, uh, Barbados right now. And this is what is waiting for us if we're allowed to get on her. The question is, will that happen, um, you know, by March of this year? Or are we going to have to wait until uh, next fall? We don't know. They've got the spa on board. It's wonderful. All right, let's zoom in here. We're going to zoom in on some more ships. Uh, these are in St. Kitts, um, Nevis, uh, Antigua, a few other areas. Uh, we have here the Rhapsody of the Seas, built in 1997 with a 2,400 passenger capacity, 765 crew, 400 inside rooms, 593 ocean view, 336 balcony. This ship, again, is one of those ships that might not make it. Uh, she might be scrapped. March 6th, supposed to be in Tampa. April um, from uh, uh, New York and then uh, Italy, Ravina, uh, sorry, Ravina, Italy uh, is where she's going to be uh, home porting. So she'll be the, doing the Mediterranean. And the question again is, can she make it pay if she's restricted to partial balconies? Uh, the grandeur of the seas built in 1996 is uh, Baltimore bound March the 6th, but there are no cruises available for booking uh, at this point in time, which tells me that this ship also being a 1996 ship with few balconies might be on its way out. Um, the cruise line just hasn't made an announcement, hasn't said anything yet, but the worst kept secret in the cruise business, uh, all uh, summer, this past summer was that the Empress of the Seas and the Majesty of the Seas would not be offloaded. And they were, and, uh, there are at least, as I said before, four or five ships that Royal Caribbean still has that fall into the same category as the Empress and the Majesty of the Seas. Now, the brilliance of the Seas, she's near St. Kitts right now. She's headed for Tampa for February the 11th. Um, again, uh, uh, there are no sailings in February. We're talking March at the earliest, and I don't think the CDC is going to allow sailings until the fall. But uh, the Brilliance of the Seas has had a long history and a, uh, you know, very loyal clientele. Beautiful ship. Um, but at the moment, she's just not in business. Um, near St. Martin, we have the Vision of the Seas. The Vision of the Seas uh, uh, was built in 1998. Uh, again, 2,400 passenger capacity, 765 crew, 400 inside rooms, 593 ocean view, and only 336 balconies. And again, the question for the vision of the seas is what is her future really going to be going forward with the cruise line? She's supposed to be on March the 8th in Fort Lauderdale, April the 25th in San Juan. So she's going to be offering, if history is any guide, she would be offering these $450 to $550 one-week cheap cruises um, uh, out of Fort Lauderdale and San Juan. But if you cannot... Uh, issue uh, tickets out of U.S. territorial ports uh, for inside rooms and ocean view rooms, this ship is not economic. And uh, some of the photos here, you can see how kind of dated she is. Uh, she's been a loyal ship for the cruise line, no question about it, but um, her days might be uh, might be uh, numbered. Now, the Enchantment of the Seas is also in uh, San Martin right now, uh, also built back in 97, 2,400 capacity for passengers, 760 crew, and the same problem, 460 inside rooms, 665 ocean views, and only 342 balconies. Uh, the ship is supposed to head to San Juan, Puerto Rico, March the 6th, and then uh, Baltimore, May 1. And again, this ship has been, um, uh, you know, offering really good deals for cruises, but uh, she will not be economic if she is uh, restricted to balcony cabins only. And we'll follow, you know, the deal there. All right, let's move north here as we zoom up a little further. We're coming to uh, the area of the Bahamas now, and we have the Independence of the Seas, uh, supposed to be in Fort Lauderdale on March the 4th. 
And then the Independence of the Seas, uh, Miami, May 16th. So she's supposed to be plying Caribbean waters uh, from, uh, uh, from, like I say, March, April, and May. We'll see if that happens. And the other ship that's in the uh, region that is uh, uh, in the Bahamas area is known as the Adventure of the Seas, another one of these older ships built in 2001 with 3,800 passenger capacity and 1100 crew capacity that's 5,000 people 600 inside rooms 939 ocean view rooms and only 876 balcony rooms so if they're restricted to 750 balcony rooms that's 1500 capacity for the ship uh, out of 3800 actual capacity and that could make the adventure of the seas uneconomic to sail in North America. She may have to be moved elsewhere. She's supposed to be in Galveston March the 1st and then Barcelona May the 31st. That Those are the estimated uh, timings and locations for this ship. Again, will she be allowed to uh, sail the uh, the Mediterranean uh, or not? Uh, you know, with, with, uh, with uh, that many inside rooms? I don't know. All right, let's come up here now to Bahamas. Uh, we're going to zoom in here. There's a cluster of ships in the water here, starting with the Oasis of the Seas. She's supposed to work her way to Fort Lauderdale on March the 7th. That would take her all of a few hours if she went to, went to where to start right now. Then New York on May the 9th and Miami on November the 3rd. So she is North America bound. The Oasis of the Seas, ready to uh, in, you know, give us all the best of the best. Uh, the Explorer of the Seas is also in this region. Uh, here I'm zooming in on these, uh, these ships now. They're all right near Coco Key, and you can see right here the names of these individual ships. So the Explorer of the Seas, um, she's uh, uh, February the 21st, supposed to be in Miami. Um, she'll basically just hang out here. She's not going to be in Miami on the 21st of Miami. Um, 21st of February, excuse me. May the 14th, the ship is supposed to be in Galveston and then San Juan, Puerto Rico in October. So again, the Explorer of the Seas is definitely Caribbean bound. Uh, she'll stay in the Caribbean area and uh, uh, we'll see if she's be able to sail this summer or not. The Liberty of the Seas on March the 7th, she's supposed to head to uh, Galveston and work her uh, work Galveston area so that would make her going to uh, she'd be going to Mexico uh, probably going to uh, Honduras um, and and that region there again we'll we'll find out if if these sail dates do not happen uh, these ships will likely stay right where they are right now and they will just come into Miami for technical calls in other words to pick up food fuel, uh, medical provisions, whatever they need to uh, look after their crews. Um, so Explorer, Oasis, Liberty, all are going to be uh, in this region right now until further notice. And, you know, we'll find out uh, if and when um, Royal Caribbean uh, can sail. Um, by the way, while we're looking at these photos, uh, the cruise line is raising money. Uh, they just finished a few offerings in the last few months. They've, uh, they've been canceling, obviously, sailings and then relaunching and announcing new sailings for 2022. And uh, the hope is that here they'll come to Labadee again and Coco Key, and they're trying to uh, hang on to deposits and encourage people to make bookings further out using those cruise credits and, you know, everything else. But, uh, the, 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 you know, this is going to continue for at least another six, nine months, as far as I can tell you. The Mariner of the Seas, uh, she is uh, hanging around the, the Bahamas, obviously, like the other ships are, and she's just going to head to Port Canaveral March the 1st if she's allowed to sail. And, uh, well, like I say, we'll see what happens. The beautiful multi-level dining rooms, uh, all the amenities. These ships have been highly uh, invested in in the last couple of years. So these water slides you're looking at here, all have been added to these uh, ships in the last three to five years. Uh, when they were originally built in the early 2000s, they did not have uh, some of the amenities that they have now. They have really stepped up um, and, and in poured, you know, billions of dollars into their fleet. There's no question that Royal Caribbean has been investing in its fleet. Absolutely no question whatsoever. Uh, this is a shot here of, of Port uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale. And um, uh, Royal Caribbean uses this port. They use Miami and they use, of course... Uh, Port Canaveral. Navigator of the Seas, uh, she is supposed to head to Miami on March the 1st as well. And she's also been heavily enhanced in the last little while. 
Uh, some of these photos are pre-enhancement. Some of these photos are post-enhancement. And a very popular ship, uh, family, a perfect ship for families, uh, four-day, five-day, seven-day cruises. Uh, you couldn't ask for more fun on board a ship than, than this one here. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been poured into the Navigator of the Seas, uh, along with the Mariner of the Seas, the Liberty of the Seas, and of course now the Oasis class ships. They have been uh, started. They've been starting to redo them, and we're talking two hundred to two hundred fifty million dollar uh, redos on the Oasis class ships. Quite amazing. Uh, the Symphony of the Seas, the newest ship in the fleet at the moment. She's supposed to be in Miami March the sixth. Uh, we're waiting for that to happen again. Uh, the ship is right now in Coco Key uh, with a skeletal staff. There might only be 150 staff on board these uh, these ships in total. And this is what it looks like when they come to Coco Key. If you you can literally have two Oasis class ships at the same time um, dock here, um, you know that in the hope was that there would be five to six thousand passengers per ship at, at a time so coco key would have been overrun with 10 to twelve thousand people plus crew but uh, with restrictions going forward these ships might be restricted to a couple of thousand passengers each only and that would uh, keep that number in check uh another ship that's um, headed into um into uh, the region into florida is another oasis class ship and that's the harmony of the seas the Harmony of the Seas is supposed to be in Port Canaveral on uh, March the 7th. Then she was scheduled to be in Barcelona on uh, May the 4th. The Harmony of Seas right now is in Miami, as you can see right here. And then uh, after May the 4th, after Barcelona, she was supposed to be November 14th back to Port Canaveral. So this ship at the moment is in Miami, so she's in the Florida region. Port Canaveral is where she's supposed to be March. Then Barcelona in May and back to uh, Port Canaveral in November. Uh, here's a shot of... Uh, the port of Miami from kind of a unique lens kind of a view. So there you go, uh, 25 different ships for Royal Caribbean, um, two of which uh, makes 27 that are no longer with the fleet, the Empress of the Seas and the Majesty of the Seas. The, the question that, that I have, uh, I'm waiting for, is confirmation of whether or not the Voyager of the Seas will be let go, uh, what about the Rhapsody of the Seas, um, the uh, Enchantment of the Seas, the Adventure of the Seas? These are ships from the late 90s, early 2000s that uh, their best days are behind them. And they just don't have the, um, the balcony capacity to, uh, to uh, make a go of it. These ships are running between 2 and 4 million a month to operate empty. Um, you put the passengers on board, uh, it, you've got to feed them now and you've got way more power usage, much more water needed, more, more crew, obviously. And, uh, if you've only got, uh, you know, 25% of the ship being utilized with paying passengers, you cannot quadruple the price and expect people to pay it. They might pay 50% more for, uh, for the space. And, and of course you'll, you'll be selling out the higher end rooms, obviously, but, um, uh, uh, I don't see it working. So we'll see if those ships are let go or not. In the meantime, we'll keep you posted on where they are and what they're up to. Thank you for following this channel and subscribing to my channel, giving me comments, thumbs ups, and supporting this channel by becoming sponsor members and making donations through PayPal and uh, Redbubble purchases of our logoed items. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll keep you posted. Bye for now.